Hey, how are you? My name is Blue Jaded. You may know me from Twitch or Twitter, or you may not know me at all. Either way, kind of works in my book. I'm just happy you're watching my video. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make red wine vinegar potato chips. Why? Just because I thought it'd be a really cool idea just to teach you guys how to make some chips. So what are we going to do? We're going to chop us up a potato. Now we've already pre-cleaned a potato and we've pre-cleaned our slicer. So we're just going to go through and we're just going to start chopping up the potato into thin, nicely sliced pieces that will look oh so great when we put them into our pot slash fryer. Now, we kind of have a little speed to ourselves, but I would not recommend anyone cutting their potato the way that we did that because our hand was in a really bad position. But as you can clearly see, we've already pre-cut up some potatoes. Now we're just gonna put the last bit of potatoes into the water so that we can get remove the starch. Now, removing the starch from the potato is extremely important because when we remove the starch, we will be able to kind of get that crispness and that flavor that we want. So what we're gonna do is, is we are gonna continue to put cold water into that bath until the water comes off clear. So, we get done. Now that the potatoes have been completely unstarched out and we make sure not to drop them onto the floor like a, like a noob, we are going to now add our vinegar. Now, we're gonna do red wine vinegar because we want kind of that sweetness to it. But you can add really any vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is another good option. Regular just white vinegar would work. It's really up to the flavor, the base of it. Actually, this is a good thing to note. The base of the potato chip being the way that we cut the potatoes and the way that we're gonna cook them, you really can add any to anything to them after that. You can make barbecue potato chips. You can make any potato chips as long as you follow my base. But of course, we're making red wine vinegar potato chips because we want to be a little different. So we're going to go ahead and put the red wine vinegar into the bath and we're going to allow the potato chips to kind of soak for 24 hours in the bath. Now, technically speaking, they are ready to cook now. We do not have to wait 24 hours before we cook the potato chips. Uh, the longer you put them in there, the more the potatoes will absorb the vinegar, the more flavor you'll get. So that's kind of up to you. I was my son to keep them cool, but we're going to put them in the refrigerator for 30 minutes up to 24 hours. And we are, we're going to only go for 30 minutes. So that it gives us plenty of time to absorb the flavor. Also gives us time to get our pot and pan set up so that when we're deep frying them, we don't accidentally cause a grease fire. So there's nothing to do now other than just to put them in the refrigerator. All right, now that we've are gotten them in the refrigerator we're kind of chilling on that it's time to get our pot ready for the deep fry now if you have a deep fryer of course use that use anything really i just i don't own a deep fryer and i just really wanted to do this so we're just going to cook them in a pot there ain't nothing wrong with it the most important thing on this part is your oil now most of the time you should use a peanut or canola oil maybe even a vegetable oil uh most oils will work on this the only thing you really shouldn't use is like butters or olive oil and i'm going to blow my cover now i decided to use olive oil now the reason i chose to use olive oil is because i have a tons of olive oil in the house and i don't have any vegetable oil or peanut oil now i know you're thinking you could have went and bought some and i could have but i didn't think about it and i already started filming so we're just gonna use olive oil so the downside of using olive oil is is that the boiling temperature of olive oil or the burning temperatures are burning temperature i mean is a lot lower so it's very easy to burn olive oil and cause a grease fire but I think we'll be fine because my house didn't burn down, spoiler alert. Um, so we'll be fine as long as really just gotta keep your eye on things. If you're, depending on what kind of oil you have, if you know the different burn rates of oil, then you kind of know what you're doing. I don't know why you're watching this video, but hey, if you don't know the different burn rates of oil, just don't burn your house down. That's a good rule of thumb. Um, so it's nothing to do now other than to put the chips into the fryer. Now, the grease is not to temperature yet, to be honest. I'm just gonna blow my cover again. The grease is not to temperature. I just was impatient. So we are going to put the potatoes in, which is actually gonna take longer to get to temperature, but it's not the worst thing in the world. We will fix our mistake by taking some of the potatoes out. And there are a lot of other things we could have got wrong. So what we chose is not the worst. Would they have, uh, they have cooked faster if we would have waited? Yes, but it's not the end of the world. Simple mistakes like that will not ruin your potato chip. What will ruin your potato chip is if you I didn't forget it a little too long and you burn them. Uh, the longer you have them in, the crispier they'll be too, which uh, you know, you only got too crispy. The problem with how the potato chips cook is they'll cook on the outside first and then kind of cook towards the center. So it's, you gotta kind of be careful because when you're cooking them, you might have a really thick, really brown outside, but 
kind of a soft, gooey center, which is why I want to separate them and get them and kind of stir them a little bit with the tongs so they get as much cooked around the center as possible. So we get that crunch throughout. And I finally put my last batch. Now this is actually my second to last batch I'm putting out now. I'm going to put one more batch of potato chips in and then we'll go to uh, bagging them up. So we're going to put them in a bag because potato chips are normally served in a bag and I thought it'd be funny. So the only thing now to do would be to put the last bit of potato chips into our seasoning bag. This bag has a little bit of salt at the bottom, but not too much, just like a pinch. We're putting the rest of the chips into the top and then we, so we're putting a good amount of garlic powder over the top of them so that they can be extra delicious. And we are going to shake, 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 shake them up, get that flavor moved as much as possible. Pretty sure there's a machine or other better ways to do this, but this is the way we're doing it. So we're going to transfer the potato chips from our seasoning bag to our proper bag. And this is the bag we're going to serve them in. Once we get all the potato chips in there, we make sure not to have any of the excess salt at the bottom so we don't have them too salty. And we can set them up and have a little room atop for air. Because what would be a potato chip bag without a little bit of air? Well, I guess the only thing to do now would be to taste the potato chip. They're crispy and delicious and the only thing now to do would be to actually prove it by taking a nice bite out of one. The only problem with that is is that I do not eat potato chips. I ain't starting today. Yep. <sighs> not eating potato chips.